Sometimes our life's callings find us in the most unexpected ways. On Panmabong grew up in a rice farming village in rural Laos before heading to the city in search of work. Through a chance encounter, she would fall in love with a backpacker from America, Justin Scoggins. After traveling across Asia together, they would settle down to a new life in America, where Justin introduced her to an obscure hobby, disc golf. Owen was a natural, and it wasn't long before she was beating her husband and other more experienced players. In recent years, the sport has soared in popularity, and so has Owen's career. She now travels the world on the Pro Disc Golf Tour. Owen is currently one of the top ranked players in the sport and is closing in on her ultimate goal, a PDGA world title. So, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of C4 Podcast, Southeast Asian Athlete Achievement Through Adversity. Uh, we have a special guest on tonight who happens to be a national and a world champion. And I am going to let my partner, John Messina, uh, tell you more about her. Yeah, we're excited to have you on, Own. We have on today, Own Scoggins. Um, Own is a disc golf player, and it's not a sport that we know a whole lot about, Own. So we're excited to have you on. And as far as we know, you're the only Lao person to ever go pro in the sport. So we're excited to, to help maybe teach a few other people about it. We also appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. We know you're just getting off practice um, and on your way home right now. So we're really excited to talk to you about it. So before we get into the interview about you personally, maybe tell, tell us what is disc golf? Um, you know, disc golf, it's just kind of like um, they have one – one man, his name, uh, what's that? Um, his name, Ed, Eddie. Steady Ed. Steady Ed was like, create, create this sport. And so many years ago, and people not, not know about it much. Um, but until like a three, four years ago after COVID, and it just boom. It just, because people cannot do anything else. And then people just like, oh, what's a disc golf? You know, they, sometimes they see people throw at the course and then they was like, oh, I want to try that because I cannot do anything else, you know, because but this golf, you can do it because it's COVID. But anyway, but this this sport, it has been for so many years, like probably over 25 years or something, but it just have just like three, four years, it could be, could be very popular. So uh, it's just like you, you kind of like you have this and you just throw to the target. So the target we call a uh, basket. Um, so the score, it just count like a golf ball. You know, you you got ace, you got par, you got birdie, you got double bo bogey, the, you got triple bogey. Uh, so pretty much like you throw from the tee pad and then try to land close at the basket and to make birdie. Just like you need, you have a putt and you try to hit the target. Um, well, you guys can share it like, if you share it like a disc golf at YouTube, you'll see it. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Well, thanks for the introduction on that. Um, I personally have never played. <laughs> well, well, let me. Can I ask this? Can I ask uh, what are the similarities to regular golf, and what are the differences um, to golf golfing? So golf, you, you, I know you. You know they they use ball, they use uh so many kind of what is it you call club. it club, right? Club, yeah. We have we use this. But also we have different kind of this you can use for throw far, throw medium, and the putter. This is the putter, so it's it's more it's more thick. So this one is for putting in the basket. This is when not close. when you close. And then you have some things like more flat that you can throw as far as you can. We have driver, we have mid range, and we have putter. So okay. we have three. And then also we have so many high of heavy. We have 175 gram. We have 150 gram. Depend on how strong your arm is. Most of us use 175 gram. So like this. Okay. Wow. This is my tour series, by the way. Um, this is my tour series, and I have a Buddha. No, this is like a a woman soldier. But it's kind oh, of like okay. a last 
Miles Sky right here. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, wow. So and this is my my two or three. You see that? That that was like um Buddha. That's very oh, nice. wow. Very yeah, nice. that's exciting. Yeah. So that's that's what you use on tour yourself? Yeah, this is the, the my company make this for me. This is my tour three. And then this is a two drive. This one to throw far for for throw far. And then the one is like more thicker, that's for mid rain. And then the 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 most thick one for upshot for for pattern. So we have we use three different kind of of this. <laughs> so it's short the rule. Yeah, but the rule is the same as for all. So okay. yeah, we have all the uh, thing like that. Yeah. So in in a competition, how many people can enter for one main event? Like how many people do you all go up against? So. Here's the thing: we have so many Kai major, major. We can up to like a um, hundred women. Oh wow! And then, yeah, hundred women from all Kai, in country, European, whatever you name it. They they fly to US to just do this competition, wow. and sometimes it's only forty, or sometimes it's just only, uh, fifty. Those you have to be qualified. You have to play whole year tournament. So and then you can make the point to qualify to be in so the the one I play right now just only forty one women. And these forty one women have to be qualified. So we we play the whole year tournament and then whoever have a high score can get in white. So this weekend only forty and then for world championship we have eighty. Eighty those have to be also like qualified to get in. But if we don't need qualify, it can be like oh, hundred people. But yeah, but 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 nowadays, nowadays, I feel like you have to play top top to get qualified to to get invited to the uh, to the tournament. So yeah, but the most the most this year was eighty or a hundred. The most, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Thank thank you for uh, um, you know explaining all that to us. So yeah. So what we'd love to do, Owen, is people are excited to hear about your background, your personal journey. Um, yours is different than most of the people we talk to, Most uh, more different than, for example, Co, who's on here, or my wife and my family. They all left in the 70s, right? Came over way back then or were born here later. You are, uh, grew up in Laos. Um, so tell us a little bit about your original background, grew up in Laos. So, okay, I grew up with um, five siblings. Um, three girl and two boy. Uh, so my parent was like, uh, they are a rice, uh, rice, what do you call it? rice farmer. Yeah. yeah, rice farmer, and we just kind of like struggling, you know, when I growing up. So I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, we kind of like poor, poor family. Um, so we, you know, like my dad, my mom, like working all day, all night. So pretty much I get up and never see my dad, my mom. I go to bed and never see their face because they're working so hard to provide food for us. And, you know, grow up in a small family. Uh, I mean, like, uh, like you know, no no money over there, but, but big family, no money, you know. <laughs> but we love each other. we full of love. The the feeling is full of, you know, like love. Um, and then, uh, you know, I growing up, I went to school in Tangon. That's where I born in Tangon. And then, um, grow up there. And then when I'm turned 21 years old, and then I go find a job in Vientiane and then working over there, you know, and then, and then, uh, I turned 24 and then I'm 24, no, 24. No, what 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 year I I met you? Baby? I I turned twenty six, right? When I'm twenty six years old, yeah. yeah. When I'm tw uh, twenty six years old, so I went to Wang Wang with my sister and my aunt, and then I met my husband, who like traveling to Wang Wang. My husband named Justin. He's from US, so that's how I come here. Um, yeah. So we met each other. So he proposed me after two weeks, and then after that. A year, and he bring me to U.S. by fiance visa in two thousand nine. That's the first time I arrived in U.S. in two thousand nine, April twenty two or something or twenty four. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, since we have Justin on, Justin, what did you think of Laos while you're traveling there? 
Oh, it was um, very peaceful. Pretty, uh, yeah, I'd say quiet and peaceful and beautiful. Okay. That's how I just, and the people are very friendly. Yeah. Um, when I met Owen, I, I thought I just fell in love instantly and I thought it was cra- crazy <laughs> to propose. <laughs> but I had, I felt like I had to propose because uh, her, her mother found out that we were like, we met each other. We, we met, maybe went on like, went, had dinner a couple times. Then we went on a trip to south of Laos for like two weeks. And, oh, on, yeah. yeah. And then so yeah. we, uh, I felt like, okay, geez, I might, I didn't want to <laughs> lose her, but I was going to travel more and come back. And so I proposed right away and we had, we had an engagement ceremony and then I come, came back. Um, I, cause I had, I already had a visa to, to go to Vietnam and then I went there to travel for a couple of weeks and then came back for, and stayed, we traveled together for almost like, five months. Yeah. Four or yeah. five months. Back, we went, back. we went down to, <laughs> yep. Uh, Thailand, Malaysia, Sumatra, Indonesia, uh, yeah. Indonesia Bali and, yeah. uh, Lombok and came back and stayed yeah. in Laos again for like two more months before I came home. Yeah. And then wow. running the visa. So was this just a, was this just a trip that you had, uh, you know, like that you had just, you know, took, took for yourself just to unwind, get away from the States and, and, yeah, uh, where I, let's see, finished college and I, then I worked for 10 years and then there was my, uh, company was kind of, closing and changing like location and and i wanted to travel yeah. and just wanted to travel. like for a year was my plan but it wound up being a little shorter <laughs> eight months wow but i traveled for eight months so most of that time traveling with own. <laughs> yeah that's great that's i mean great we, 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 both, we both doesn't looking for married or anything we, we both young i'm 26 he's 27 so we was not looking for to to have a family but hey when you found somebody you love you, you just know yeah it, you know? yeah <laughs> great that's awesome it's a beautiful story yeah it is and, and obviously the culture is different here it's yeah, very so, normal um, go ahead yeah it, it's funny because like we saw each other at a restaurant and then he just like backpacking and then he just like flip-flop and <laughs> small backpack he's guitar you know but doesn't matter you know i just flop. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's how a, I come here, and yeah. Okay, yeah, the culture's there. So obviously, the we it's okay for people in America to date for years and travel together, but there you have to get engaged. You got to get married. Kind of different, uh, different yeah. culture. Yeah, even, but it worked out. The yeah. thing is, my parent was pretty. I mean, they quite open enough. They quite open enough. You know, like I. I introduced Justin to my parent, and they they love him. They love him. They they can feel like he's a, he's a great guy. Like they did, you know. Like and also like whatever I move over here, I ask, I sit down, ask my parent, what do you guys think if I'm gonna come and stay with him, US? And they said, yeah, I, they trust him because they can see, uh. they can see like he's through his heart. Like he's a great man. I mean. It's not it's not rich, you know, but he's good heart. Like he's full of good heart. So that's that's thing I'm looking for. Uh, money, we if we're not lazy, we can both working and, and earn money. So that's why. But so far so good. It's have been fifteen years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've been with each other for fifteen years, married for over oh, yeah. So so Justin, you speak a little bit of Lao? <laughs> uh Koi Vao Vao Lao Nan. Oh the lie, the lie. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, Owen, when you came to the U.S., um, how was it adapting to the culture? It's quite different, right? You have to drive everywhere. You, you know, we're kind of isolated from our families here. We live in this suburb or this apartment far away, typically. How was it adapting? Oh, wow. Well, um, first of all, in Laos, I just only ride a motorbike. I, I never drive a car before. Yeah. So when I flew here, I looked down. I was like, yeah, "Is that hell? <laughs> what the hell is that? Like it's so light, like it's so bright Angeles, down there yeah, in Los it's... Angeles." <laughs> when I on the airplane, I'm like, "Holy crap! What's going on down there?" And then when I arrive, and it's just so many cars, it's just 
I was overwhelming. I'm like, oh my god, what the heck going on out here? Is like these people are even sleeping? You know, <laughs> because I arrived so late, like God, I like, lay Yeah, like yeah, but the people still. Nine is dark. <laughs> yeah, but people and and then also the lifestyle was was so crazy. Um, first we would stay at the Venice Beach, and it's crazy out there. But I'm the person I like. Um, I'm a, adapt very easily. Because also I come here when I'm just 26 years old. So I'm open my, I'm like first like couple, maybe six, seven months was like, oh God, what's going on? But after one year, I'm like, yeah, you know, I got it. I got it. Um, so I feel like when you, when you're young, it's more easy to adapt. And also I'm kind of open mind because otherwise I'm not going to help him. You know, I'm not open mind. I'm probably just married with loud guy. Right. So I'm kind of like, you know what? I, Whatever you know, I'm 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 spread myself out there and see what's going on, you know. And so yeah, first first year was quite quite crazy for me, but it's good crazy because I can see a lot of good opportunity is gonna happen, it's gonna change my life. So I I look I looking in a very good way. So yeah. So when you were in Laos growing up, were you um, learning English in school? So when you came over to the States, it, it was somewhat uh, like you adapted pretty well. Um, so when I'm at school, when I'm young, they just only like study. Um, they teach us like French, a little bit French. Okay. A, a, B, C, D, whatever, you know. <laughs> and then after that, when I come to high, uh, high school and then they start to teach a little bit English. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you know, I'm, I'm not good about study. I'm just like lie down on the table you know i'm not i'm not good about it so i'm pretty much like not good about english um first of all when we met each other we kind of have a quite quite a challenging to understand each other um when 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 he talked to me i'm just kind of like have to guessing a lot of stuff uh but you know like i said when you love somebody you're willing to you know to learn and then yeah. to, is and then I've been to school for like maybe three months, and then after that, it's just because I'm with him every day, so I'm kind of like listen and and study from spoken, but writing I'm pretty bad right now. Even I'm writing. Don't even ask me about writing, bad. <laughs> but listening, yeah, I think I can do like thirty percent right now. So you guys can guess it. What do you guys think? I think <laughs> listening, hundred ninety nine percent listening. <laughs> Um, thank you yeah, yeah so uh, yeah when i met him i was like pretty hard have a hard time to understand him like, i'm not gonna lie here yeah well it's i tried to pick up lao over the years and i could understand it well but to speak it's very hard because of the tone i i can't get the tone right no no but you married lao yeah yeah my wife oh, hey. well, well but she's from here she she came at five years old you know, oh, uh, that's what I said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time ago. Oh, so this matter, hey, whatever he had there, you know, a lot of people. So. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, mm -hmm. well, good. Well, that's a good background on you. So, the sport of disc golf. I mean, how did you get into that? Um, my husband, uh, he's played for over twenty years, and he loved this sport so much. And then when I arrived to US, he's like Saturday, Sunday, he's always like invite me, like, babe, you want to go play like this golf? I'm like, what is this golf? No, I don't want to go. You kidding me? He have been asking me to go play for like a year and I was not giving him a chance because I said, what? No, I want to just like hang out of the house or me go to the ocean or whatever. But, and then, uh, and then he, he, he go with his friend and I'm just kind of like, man, you know what? I think I should try more because he's he loved this golf and he's love of my life and I wanna eh, maybe just just try one or two times and then I try first I don't like it you know try again try again and then I start to play better and now I I hook up like I I beat my husband right now <laughs> he, for many years for so many yeah. years now I beat him <laughs> we, we we were gonna we were afraid to ask but you you volunteered the information so. <laughs> yeah so i'm pretty much like right now like he taught me everything he taught me how to throw backhand side arm and and I, I just i i guess i just took everything from him and and i just 
you know, now when we play with each other and I beat him all the time. So, but well, uh, you're kind of a natural athlete, though. Like first uh, time we went bowling, like Owen has perfect form. Uh, <laughs> like the first time, I was like, what? You couldn't even see the ball hit. The, like it doesn't drop. It's just so smooth. Every sport, darts, any sport. I guess because uh, <laughs> when I'm young, I'm kind of play a lot of sports. So I think, you know, I think it's natural. But yeah, so um, my husband taught me how to play this golf. And uh, yeah, right now he's traveling with me a lot. And then he carry, he's a caddy, my caddy. So he carry my bag and go with me every tournament. And also he bring his commuter so he can work when the, I'm go practice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So, so are you, you go on tour, you pretty much travel the country uh, competing then? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So I think this year, probably over 27 states I go. Wow. Like I go, I, I fly everywhere. I fly to this state. After this sermon finished, I fly to another state. Like I'm probably home just only two months this year. Wow. Yeah. I know it's crazy. It's, it's insane. Like sometimes I go for like so many months, like I'm not even going home because it's every week tournament. Yeah. Every week after this, I have to fly here or sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, pretty much like how many states like this year? I play probably over like probably like 34, 35 tournament this year. And then all of that was so many different states. And that's already. Yeah, it's already. Yeah, <laughs> you're not over. Wow. Yeah, right get... now we're at the North Carolina right yeah, now. North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, you, you are. Do you get a chance to see the city at all? Um, like when you, when you go to a city to compete, do you get a chance to, you know, go out on the town, check out restaurants and stuff like that? Or is it just a pretty much is like business? Like you're going in, you do your job, and it's on to the next town. How 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 Do you get to see much of the U.S.? And and which part and which part of the U.S. besides where you live would you say is is uh, it's like uh, has been a special place for you that you enjoyed going to? Um, I I like North Carolina. I like Texas. I like oh I like Vermont. Yeah, I like Vermont. I like um. Yeah, we just came from Tahoe. Right? Oh. Yeah, big. Lake Tahoe. Um, what else I like? We're in Oregon. Oregon, Oregon, yeah, Oregon is great. I love Oregon. Oh my god, so many spit. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's pretty, pretty much. I like it, and then, and then also here's the thing. I practice like pretty much like, um, I practice in the morning until maybe five or six or seven, and after that, and then we go check it out town. We go check it out brewery, or have dinner outside. Go walk in the city so we pretty much like after whatever i practice with it we go to the city we check it out the city we make sure we need to stop by the city and check it out or have some good food or check it out the brewery um yeah pretty much like we visit city a lot um or or like where is that for sure (laughs) (laughs) but anyway yeah that's that's my schedule you know um practice practice um hey what's up yeah so practice all day and then go check it out nighttime. Wow. Yeah. So mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. yeah. And so you're part of a team, right? So there's teams or is it more of a sponsored athlete? Yeah. What can you explain maybe your situation? Um, so I'm a team star. Uh, we, I'm, I'm, I get sponsored by Innova company. This is the, the probably the biggest company of this. And we have so many high level of sponsor. They have team crew, me in the beginning, and then team champion. Team champion is the middle, and then team star. The team star is the highest. So I'm a team star. So, you know, you, you sign a contract, you got clothes, you got did do that, whatever, bonus here and there, uh, depend on how you perform. And uh, sometimes when you win the tournament and then your sponsor, like, keep you like bonus and or even you get filming you get paid for the filming oh. you know so something like that and then also i have so many kind of the uh, different company who like it's not company this but something else can be like 
Bag. Uh, can be bag, can be uh, shoes, can be here and there, different cars. And then those sponsor either give me a clothes or pay me monthly, it's something like that. Yeah. Wow, that's that's incredible. Um, so what ha- what were some of your biggest accomplishments so far? What does that mean? Uh, what you... Ko, say it loud. Ko, ask it loud. Uh, accomplishment, Bewa. Oh man, you get you're getting me here. We want to test him. <laughs> teacher, teacher, uh, sing sung sung, sing sung sung. I want, I want to be, I want to so be far. either win. Not the dream, but what you finished already. Oh, already. match play. Match play championship. Match play championship, yeah. and then pro master. World. Two time. Two time, two year in a row. Um, wow. So. Yeah, match play, you have to qualify. Only 16 men and 16 women. It has been three-day tournament. And then three-day tournament, and then I have to beat those 16 women. And you only have one chance, one round. Each round, yeah. Each round. You lose it, so for me, it's, it's, I feel very happy because whatever I play with those girls, I beat them all the time. You got first place. Yeah, I got first place all the time until I I hit the top. So I I win. So because you cannot make any mistake out there. Like you cannot even make like one row lose. You need to be win, 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 win. You didn't lose. So that's why I play five match, five match with five people. So I beat them all, like different row. So that is um pretty. I and feel then, very happy, and then um, and pro then, tour. Oh no, a world master. Master world championships. Master world championships. Uh, masters. <laughs> so exciting! You on the top. So yeah, so I I I I won that one too. So that was two years in a row. So, but in the future, I would love to win world champion. That's gonna be super dream come true. But that's gonna be hard. That's gonna be a very hard one. Explain world that. championship, like you're saying, like uh, like not matches, but open. Yeah. Open so, yes, all oh, kind oh. of, all kind of young own mm-hmm. that is open for everyone. Yeah. But but forty, it's just only forty up you can play. But a world is everyone can play, so that's why it's that one. So, yeah, but you're one of the few players who's over forty who's still very competitive in the open yeah field. yeah yeah so my life um I'm, I'm 41 right now but i still do very good on even all ages yeah. all ages you know yeah. because uh, i think right now my rating is i'm probably top four oh, your rating is top yeah. four or top three in the world right top now third, third, three so, rating. yeah yeah now yeah. Are, are the tournaments are sorry john are, are the tournaments just in the united states or do you actually go around the world um, we have all kind. We we have um from most of them is gonna be in US because US is I think it's probably the first yeah most the, the, of them, but yeah most European but open. also we have European Open we Japan have Japan open. open we have in wow. Thailand also okay uh, yes yeah, so European Open they have like four or five. Uh, time a year that's a huge also is major and also japan open is a major also and then maybe in canada or here and there like finland whatever uh, that's european right so yeah. yeah so we have some time at the european and we have some in asia also yeah that's great well yeah exciting <laughs> well well oh yeah we appreciate all that so this next part I want you to answer in Lao, okay? Because there's a lot of people out there, and not everybody wants to be a disc golf player. But you've taken it almost to the very top. You're and you're you're pursuing to get to the top. Also in your life, you kind of left your family behind and went to a whole new country. Really took some risks in life. What advice would you have for young people out there about pursuing their dreams and their opportunities? And please say this one in Lao. ก็อยากให้ทุกคนแบบลองเหตุลองทําเนาะเพราะว่าชีวิตเฮามันสั่นถ้าหากว่าคิดว่าอยากเห็นอย่างก็ขอให้เต็มที่กับมันไม่ต
คือคอยคือกันเนาะคอยคือว่าคอยคือสีเหตุบ่ได้แต่ว่าคนก็ร้องเบิงจนว่าฮอดซูมือนี่คอยคือว่าโอ้ขันเฮาบ่ร้องฮอดกับบ่หูขันสั้นบ่ต้องย่านชีวิตมันสั้นอยากเห็ดอย่างเห็ดโลดแล้วก็ขันเจ้าเห็ดแล้วขอให้เห็ดเต็มทีขันเจ้าเห็ดเต็มทีแล้วเจ้ายังบ่สักเสร็จกะร้องอีกเชิญหนึ่งหรือว่าเปลี่ยนเปลี่ยนเปลี่ยนอันใหม่ก็ได้เพราะว่าบ่ร้องกับบ่หูบ่ต้องย่านอืมเรื่อยไหนครับใช่ครับใช่ very good Well, well, great. Yeah, we appreciate you. We also appreciate the opportunity to meet Justin. Um, we wish, the, yeah, we wish the two of you a lot of luck in in this dream that you're pursuing. We also also look forward to continuing to follow you, both personally and through the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame, and letting everybody who follows the Lao athletes on there, you know, know how you guys progress. So yeah, thank you yeah. so much. Because uh, this weekend and next week is a big tournament and. Everybody, whoever win the second week is going to be huge. Okay. So that's why we working on it, and is is okay. going to pay out, especially next week. Like we took, look, we looking for like thirty or forty thousand uh, dollars for for the winner. Wow. Yeah. So work hard on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing um, the the sports with us. Like John and I had no. We were talking about it before you came on. Like we had no idea, and then, and your your success and how quickly you rose into um, in in the sport. You definitely are a natural born athlete. So that that's really cool to hear from someone from you know. Again, I'm I'm proud to hear that as another Laotian, right? That because we're always limited. I think growing up um, by our parents and then grandparents is just kind of stay in school and study, but there are so many, you know, naturally gifted athletes out there that aren't known about. And that's why John and I created the hall of fame and, and, and also this podcast. So thank you for sharing. And I'm a fan now, so I'm going to have to go and check out disc golf and, hey. and follow you on, on your events. So. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to start like disc golf and well, then on skulking. You'll, you'll see it. Right. you see me out there. All right. We'll yeah. yeah. I mean, thank you so much. I very, very appreciate both of you to like invite me and then, you know, so I can see the, like show the people what is disc golf yeah. about. Like you never know because in the future, I, I want to I wanna build a course in Laos in the future. So I think I think someday my dream gonna come true because I wanna teach teach allow people or even the uh, the neighborhood nearby mm -hmm. can can come and try before because I know this sport is gonna be huge in the future. Yeah. People yeah. people make good money to living, so it's not just only fun game. Like people actually like make like million dollar contract, half million contract well, like, per year. So far, just a couple of people. <laughs> no, babe, like people make good money right now. Like, Someday, um, yeah. Um, because um, it's, it's start to grow very big right now. So hopefully in the future, um, I can introduce this sport to uh, Lao people. Yeah, right and you're definitely a trailblazer for the sport and for the people yeah. of Laos, you know, that's awesome. That's yeah. the best part. And probably bring this and I'm gonna try. I appreciate both of you and 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 you guys was so much fun to talk with. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you guys right. were so nice. So thank you. Uh, you're All right. Thanks. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on, Cup Jai. So Okay, Lela. You both have a great night then. All right. You guys too. Okay. Thank you. The C4 Podcast is brought to you by the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame. Visit us on the web at laoamericansports.com, celebrating the first, inspiring the next. <laughs>